Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Rush Roots, where you get to know our community a little bit more and kind of how they got into Rush. So today we have from Chicago, Paul Simon, not to be confused with Paul Simon. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so, Jim, take it away. All right. Well, Paul, so why don't you tell us how you heard about Rush and what really got you into the band and what keeps you around? Uh, I heard about him. I could go down to the mill a second. Uh, <laughs> I worked at a video store and I was mostly surrounded by huge deadheads. And they always laughingly called Rush uh, Rock for Mathematicians. And it didn't get me into them or didn't keep me away from them. I just didn't bother. And I saw a commercial for a show of hands in December of probably 88 then. And it featured Marathon. And it was the chorus. And I was hooked. Buddy of mine, uh, my friend Pat, who actually was in the same old situation video from Motley Crue, um, brought the album over, put it on, played it start to finish. And A, I was hooked. B, mm -hmm. I instantly kind of gravitated towards the power windows and the hold your fire stuff. It was just that sound in that era really hit me. So when Presto came out, all bets were off. That was <laughs> that. To this day, it's still like the album to me. Uh, you yeah. know, we can use words like best or anything like that. But as far as special place in my heart, the, the two songs that really did it for me in those early in that early time for me was Marathon for sure. And then when Presto came out, it's funny to hear people talk about subdivisions as being the song that they rallied around and they could relate to War right. Paint. It's actually my yes. War Paint yes. is subdivisions. So I'm yeah. waiting on the table for that one because. That's oh, that's yeah. it, I to this day it's still even with its basic drum parts, Neil's fills, and especially right before that final chorus, and then leading in that final chorus, that I still get goosebumps. Oh yeah, yeah, for so. sure. That war war pain is to me, it's a it's a standout, it's a sort of like a hidden standout song on that album, you know, but it's very much a standout for me. I oh yeah, that's that's so great. And live, oh, that's that's being my first show. Oh man, the rabbits, the rabbits oh. actually finished coming up at the start of War Paint. So now I'm like, Rabbits, yeah, well, that was fucked. <laughs> well, so why don't you tell us about your first show and you know what? Well, I guess you kind of said what tour it was, but tell, tell us about your first show. I uh, went with a couple of buddies of mine up to Alpine Valley in East Troy, Wisconsin, and uh, it. it one thing that actually I believe, Jim, you brought up on a different show was that the fans, as much as they love all the previously released material, every time a Presto song came on, the crowd went nuts. And that yeah. I noticed that I saw from Presto all the way through R30, and it was always when there was a new album released that they always wanted to hear new material. And matter of fact, I was even present for the recording yes. of different stages at World nice. Music Theater in Tinley Park, Illinois in 1997. So Ooh, listen nice. real close. I'm, I'm way back at the end of the pavilion, like row YYZ or something. But no, it was, <laughs> it was that night. I, I wasn't a show I didn't love. And that was a rarity because I've been to, I didn't do sports. I did more movies and music more than anything. And yeah. Rush concerts were always the top of the top. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and it's it's awesome. You you mentioned the different stages. There was one show, and I don't remember what it was, but I was um it was the show time was approaching, like the days and weeks were approaching, right? And I was just kind of going about my life or whatever. And then I I put on, I'm like, I'm gonna put on different stages. And just hearing that opening and dream line, I'm like instantly I was like, okay, I am just so jazzed about this. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's, that's like awesome. Light there. Shooting out and yeah, a girlfriend who was with me at the time, she's like, "So this is a Rush concert." I'm like, "Welcome." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So and then the college radio, I I was on a I was a psych philosophy double major at Lewis University over in Romeoville, but I was on a college radio station. It was alternative, but I was friends with the general manager, so he said, "If you want to change your format a little bit." So I always opened with Spirit of Radio and closed with Tom Sawyer. So, nice. and then stealing straight out of CFNY FM, the whole like trying to do multiple formats, big band into jazz and alternative into Rush. Oh, nice. You know, yeah. So I, I, you know, I flat out stole the idea. I never claimed it as mine, but I even called the show Spirit of Radio. So I went 
brought to you by. Cool. So that's awesome. That's great. Wow. There are no original ideas. They're all meant to be stolen. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, <clears throat> what'd you say? Leverage with pride. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right. So this this next question is kind of get to know kind of where you were at the beginning of your rush fandom and kind of where you are now in your rush fandom. So we, we want to know what was what your first favorite song and first favorite album were, and which you kind of already elaborated on. Maybe it was different, but um, and does that differ from where you are at now in terms of and obviously as, as a rush fan, you know, you have multiple favorites now at this point, but if you had to pinpoint one, we want to see the progression of your, your rush fandom. So. Absolutely. Uh, I kind of fell out of it. as I was getting into other stuff around, looks around our 30. So when snakes and arrows came out, it wasn't like as much. I had other bands and other things going on in life still had it, but didn't really give it much of a listen. Same thing with clockwork angels. Uh, there's my mm. rush regret is not seeing clockwork angels live, but I'll get to that in a mm. second. So I'm probably the only Rush fan on earth who can say that I missed R40 and I don't regret it because I was actually following uh, a recently reunited group assault around the country and uh, to steal a line from Goodwill Hunting, I had to see about a girl. So <laughs> it, was, it was very important that I made all those shows and I was very into like hanging out with them and uh all that they were because they hung out with the fans before and after the shows. But point is, I missed our 40 and I don't regret it. I guess I wish I could have, but since yeah. the time frame matched up, as far as now favorites, completely different. Not I, there's still that place in my heart for that, but uh, hold your fire because of the recent round tables. I gave much harder listens to, even though that was still part of the early ones. But now it's uh, I had spinal surgery a couple of years ago and I had for mm. physical rehabilitation, I had to learn to walk again. So oh, I man. made it a, a concentrated effort and I said, okay, I didn't give Clockwork Angels a try. So I'd walk four miles a day and I relearned how to walk to Clockwork Angels front to back. Mm -hmm. And then I worked backwards, like our deep dives, snakes and arrows and all that. So, and then obviously in the last, uh, well, in the last three years, I've gotten a sleeve of tattoos. That is every piece of album art from Grace Under Pressure through Clockwork Angels. I'm oh, only got three left, but Nice. Uh, as far as where it's evolved to now, number one song actually of all time, not just Rush for me, is The Garden. I that is the finest song, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that hits me the hardest out of any song. And I got a couple of days on me. Um, I've never heard a sequel, so it, and then Armor and Sword is on a lot, Spindrift is on a lot, Anarchist is on a lot, and probably Open Secrets, just to throw five out there as a favorite. Oh, wow! So, those are all awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's it's got so the great. Clockwork Angels symbols on there. I don't think folks can't. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. pictures, but yeah, it's a Clockwork Angels working clock. How cool is that? that and is my Trailer cool. Park Boys R40 banner back yeah. there. <laughs> the bones, so. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Those are both. Cool. Uh, and working my way backwards slowly because the one thing is I'm, since I was into that 80s stuff so much, I respect the classics. I like them. I have not jumped into that, that pool head first yet. So yeah, you stick it out fashion. I'll I'll get there. But a lot of my there you friends go. fans like you don't own twenty one twelve except on cassette. I'm like, I know. I'll get there. I'll <laughs> rush. To it, I'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Of course. That's great. All right. Well, why don't you uh, tell us where people can find you on social media if they want to get to know you a bit better as a Russian? Absolutely. On Instagram, Kilroy, which was my name on the air back on WLRA, Kilroy242 uh, on Instagram. So I'm usually reposting Rush fans, Rush lyrics stuff, and then Hawaii stuff. The culture is pretty important to my family, Brook Assault, et cetera. But on Instagram, cool. that's where to find me. So did you when you, so Kilroy was your name on the air? Did you ever say that you were here? Kilroy was here constantly. That's actually where I stole the nice. name from. Oh, oh awesome! <laughs> Little sticks reference there for all you guys out there who may Chicago know. hometown. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, another fantastic band. <laughs> cool. Any other rush facts you want to share about yourself? Any anything else you uh, think the community might find inter interesting about about? Uh, Paul Simon, not to be confused with Paul Simon. Uh, I'm a lyrics <laughs> junkie. That's 
musicianship is top notch, but the lyrics, I never lost the philosophy bug. So uh, actually, uh, yes, when Neil passed, uh, speaking of lyrics, when Neil passed, uh, audible.com released his entire bibliography yeah. for free for a week. Uh, I grabbed them all. And what helped me not only get through that period, but also always learning life lessons, typical philosopher, uh, hearing Ghost Rider specifically got me through a couple of really hard times because I it's one thing to know what he'd been through, but to hear it in his voice, in his own words, yeah, was huge. That yeah. I always like, okay, things are really rough right now or whatever, but you know what? How does, how did he handle this? Because I I always gravitated towards his philosophies anyway, so that that really helped a lot. So that like I said, lyrics awesome. junkie, and just never. I I fell off uh, once, but not and never again as far as fandom goes. Because now it's I've got this whole thing in the round tables. I'll do if I end yeah. up on a panel, I'll do five or six hours of research reading. Where they get the lyrics from? Where is the inspiration from? What's the history behind this? You know, Manhattan Project. I wasn't on that one, but I did a ton of reading just because I, I'm a, a completionist. I want to know the stories behind these things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's, That's great. So cool. All right. Well, my notes say, Ryan, take us home. So I guess I'm going to take you home uh, <laughs> like uh, high water. So, yeah, um, Paul, thanks for joining us. Um, if uh, if you're a Rush fan, you know, and you've, uh, you know, you've, you've watched our our any of our series over time and you know you want to participate in some manner but perhaps you don't feel comfortable coming on and joining a panel and being you know the new guy on a panel or gal on a panel um these would be for you you know come on and share your story uh it's all about you so uh you know come on come on rush roots and, and be a malignant narcissist you know uh so um if you want to do that, rushfans at rushfans.net. Very, very simple email, and we'll get back to you, and we'll have you on. So, uh, Paul, thanks for thanks for doing this, and yeah, everyone thanks. watching. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.